As I, my wife, and our oldest son took shelter in a closet at home, our two youngest in a hallway at Plaza Towers Elementary and our oldest daughter in a classroom at Southmore High, a massive EF5 tornado ripped through our hometown. That day changed our lives forever. It's coming and it's coming right at us. Whatever happens, don't let go. Everything just, that day just felt like it took forever. I couldn't even tell where the end of the street was because everything was just gone. My wife and I have been together for 19 years. I was born and raised in Oklahoma City, uh, so I've been here pretty much all my life. Uh, I moved to Texas for a little while, off and on. May 20th um, started pretty much like any other day. It was Monday, and it was the last week of school. Started out with waking up. My dad took my brother and sister to school. I was actually scheduled to work that day. I'd been sick that whole weekend. Monday, I was, wasn't was feeling the greatest. Adrian, my oldest son, had a doctor's appointment that day, and my wife kind of felt uncomfortable, you know, going by herself, so she had asked me if I, if I would, you know, take the day off, and I told her, well, I wasn't feeling good anyway, so yeah, I'll take the day off and I'll go with her. You know, when we went into the doctor's appointment, it was a nice, sunny day. We come out, and it was raining. As soon as we got into the car, it started hailing. Right when we were pulling out of the parking lot area, the siren started going off. So I called the kids' school and I said, I know that y'all are on lockdown right now, but can I still come get my kids? At this time, we still didn't know how bad it was, where the storm was, how bad it was going to hit us. Um, so we decided, okay, we'll go ahead and leave them there. Something does happen, you know, they'll be safer at the school, you know, it's a big building. And so we went, turned on the news and watched that for a little bit and realized that the tornado was coming directly at us. It was on the ground in Newcastle, and they said that it was heading towards Moore. I was like, okay, it's pretty close to us. I had my son go put all the pillows and blankets and everything he could find into our closet, and I made him go get his football helmet and put it on. And I've always been a storm freak, so, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm from Oklahoma. I was snapping pictures and, and kind of looking. The house across the street, one big hailstone just hit that. And I was like, and I was waiting for more, but another one never came. It was just that one big hailstone that hit that house. And I was like, well, that was weird. I walked off into the yard and I was looking between the houses and I could see it coming at us. I was like, okay, this is gonna be bad. Me and Adrian got into the closet and then all of a sudden I hear my husband running down the stairs. And I wrapped my arms around Athena, grabbed Adrian's arms and I told them, I said, whatever happens, don't let go. It sounded like hail just hitting like a window or something. And then we heard the stuff hitting our house. It felt like it, was just, it just kept going and kept going and it was never gonna end. It felt like my head was gonna explode and um, my husband was just waiting for the first time that it come and pelt him into the stomach. He just knew that he was going to die. I'm praying in my head, and I'm talking to them at the same time. God, if this is going to be the end, just make it quick. And then it stopped, it was, and we were scared to get out because we didn't know if we were like in the tornado or if it was just done. And I finally just opened the door. Just just a little bit, just a peek out, and I noticed that the house was still standing around us, so I was like, okay, we're okay. Opened the front door, our glass door was all, there was some metal thing stuck in it. There was sheet metal wrapped around it, so we had to kick it open. I looked straight across the street, and the house that I saw the, the hailstone hit was fine. It was still standing, you know, and I was like, okay. So I kind of stepped out, and I remember looking to the left, and I just saw the debris everywhere, but that was it. The houses were still there. And then I remember looking to the right. And the houses along 149th were just, half of them were gone. And I ran outside and it was really muddy. There were just little pieces of wood everywhere. I think I was in shock at that, at that point. For one, just the fact that we were alive. And then for two, I just started hearing the screams, like people screaming, you know, help, help. Athena's mission was to get Marissa. 
Um, they had locked him down at Southmore. They wouldn't let him out. I saw one of my friends crying, and so I asked her, I went up to her and asked her what was wrong, because she said Plaza got hit and just kind of looked at me, and I just kind of, I don't know, I felt like my heart stopped. When the tornado hit, I was in Plaza Tyler's elementary. I was in the music room before it hit. And tornado sirens went off. Our school alarm started going on, and everyone ran into the hallway. I fell on the ground and just started crying, and like teachers started running around me, like my teacher and my counselor, they all like were surrounding me. And... So she didn't know if her brother and sister were okay. We went, opened the garage, got in the car, and then as we were pulling out, we realized that the alleyway was just filled with like wood. and Big chunks of metal and, and debris all in the alleyway, so we had to clear that out just so we could make a path to get out. We got as far as the 7-Eleven on 19th and Santa Fe and looked over, and that's when we realized that it was gone. There was nothing. My heart just kind of sank. It's about a mile from the 7-Eleven to the school. But because there was no houses, we were just running through people's houses. <laughs> I pointed and I told Athena, I said, that was our house. That's the tree that was in front of our house that the kids always climb. That's the only thing left. They got there ahead of me and we were drenched from me down in mud and water. Everybody was in shock. It, it was somebody telling me, well, most of the second graders are up front. I asked them, I said, okay, so where are the third graders? and they would never answer me. And I, I remember just watching them point, and then they finally told me they're buried under there. I remember falling to my knees, and I was like, no way, no, no way. We ran up front to get my sister, and I remember running past the playground, which was like demolished. And I looked straight into the building that I was usually in, and all I could see was the cafeteria, and the doors were gone. I run up front and I find Haley. She was shivering, she was cold. She was wrapped up in a blanket, but she was still, you know, cold. And they were all soaking, all the kids were just soaking wet. And I remember Adrian taking off his shirt and giving it to Haley, you know, to, to warm up. And I told him, I was like, stay here with her. I have to go find your brother. As I was turning and I was almost to where everybody was digging, I heard Xavier say, daddy. I mean, that's all I heard. Every other noise around me just stopped. One of the coaches has him. He has him like this. He has him by his arm, just kind of holding him. One of the other guys just kind of lifted up his shirt, and I was like, oh my God. And he was just bleeding. Um, he had a huge gash in his back. My dad ran to me and said, go find an ambulance and get a stretcher. And then he hollered for me, because I was like, well, I gotta go check on Haley. I can't just stand here. So I was going to get Haley. Adrian and I pick him up, we pull him back out of there, and we walk him through. And we're going through like little spaces between cars, so we're having to lift him. We're having to kind of tilt him a little bit. You know? And I just kept telling him I know it hurts, so I'm gonna just hold on, hold on. And he said, go get Rissa from school, and then we'll meet up at the hospital. So we get him into an ambulance, but you can just hear the chaos outside. People were screaming, you know, where's my kid? Then I remember them walking another little girl up, and she was just covered, I mean, just covered in blood. They, they said, what's your name? And she said, Courtney. Is that Courtney from across the street? When we lived over there, our, our neighbor girl across the street was Courtney. A doctor came in and said, come see your brother. And he had like a neck brace on to get like an x-ray. He was able to talk to Adrian, he saw him, and, and Adrian, from that point, just never left his brother's side. He had stayed with him the whole time. Every time something would happen or Xavier would scream, you know, Adrian was there telling him, you know, Xavier, you're fine, you know, you're, you're all right. They just gotta do this, I know it hurts, but they, they, have, to, they have to fix you. My aunt came to pick us all up, and then we went straight to my grandma's that lives in Dell City. So there was a lot of people who had been picked up by their parents, so there wasn't that many students left. They were able to fit all of us on the one bus, and they took us to a church. From there, I just waited for my mom to come get me. I remember we went back to Dell City with my grandma, and my brother was there, and like that was about it. We, not, we didn't have anywhere to take shelter at that other house. We weren't planning on moving till June. We were waiting until the kids got out of school. But this house popped up out of nowhere, and we knew if we didn't jump on it, we would lose it. Adrian probably had to grow up. I'm pretty sure he grew up a lot that day. I remember Adrian and I were walking to the truck, and we were walking back, and I kind of stopped him. You know, I have to tell you that 
I, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. I know that you probably have seen things that you shouldn't have seen at your age. You know, in the last couple of days, I said, but you never, you never stopped. You never buckled down. You never shied away. You just hung in there. I said, you know, I, I said, you, you were the rock for your brother. I said, you were the rock for me. Um, you know, and then I told him, I was like, I'm so proud of you. You know, for, for everything that, you, that you've gone through and you just, you never let up. You never gave up. You just kept on trucking. We came back here and kind of settled down a little bit. Adrian didn't stop. He kept going. He would randomly go to like churches or wherever, or even they would go help people clean up their yards, whatever he could do to help someone out after the tornado. And I remember one day he came home and he said, Mom, they're doing something neat at Plaza Towers. We just would go like, almost daily to the Hope Station and meet different people. They really helped our family a lot. I don't know where we would have been without them. Like, they just showed us that everything was going to be okay and that everybody goes through hard times in life, but you live and you learn. There's a higher power there that put everything in place because we moved before the storm hit, which we could have lost everything. We lost a lot. We all came out of it. It was a, it was chaotic, yes, but we all came out okay. We have some, you know, there's some scars and there's some emotional scars, and, and you know, there's gonna be for a while. But I started, you know, just kind of reading Bible verses, and I'm like, wow. As much as I kind of pushed away from God all my life, He never left.